Last time, we talked about conductors and insulators, but that was only a very general look at them, with no equations or specifics. So let's actually get into them. So recall from last time, what are conductors and insulators? Well, conductors are things that are very good at moving electric charge within them. So these electric charges are moving very fast. Meanwhile, insulators are materials made in order to slow down electric charge. So these electric charges are basically staying still. This insulator is like a sponge for electric charge. It's taking in a bunch of it without letting any of it out. So conductors are mostly the important ones. Why? Because insulators are made specifically so that they inhibit the effects of an electric field or any electric charge, which means that the fields generated by them are basically just a normal electric field, but damper. So that's why we don't want to investigate them. They're not that interesting. But conductors are very different. How do we investigate the electric field around a conductor? Well, for starters, let's try visualizing it. The way a conductor works, it's going to move all negative charges to one end and all positive charges to the other end. What does that mean inside? Well, inside, the positive field is going to go this way, the negative field is going to go this way, this way, this way, this way, this way, this way, this way. So it appears it's creating, you know, this kind of field that outs one in and out. But of course, when you take into account the sign of the uh, electrons, or sorry, negative charge, any charge that's going to be within the conductor is going to have absolutely zero force on it. But, of course, that's not what happens outside. Outside, there's going to be a large electric field. Now, how do we quantify that? Well, here's the unbelievable part. Because of Gauss's law, if we had any charge distributed within a Gaussian surface, the electric field it will give off is always just of this form. Is always of this form. Recall that Gauss's law states that for any arbitrary surface, since area increases quadratically as you get farther and farther away and increase the radius, so as this increases quadratically, when you multiply the amount of force by the area rudimentarily, since we're talking about flux for the electric field here, this scaling effect, or these two scaling effects, just about cancel out and give you a constant electric field no matter what surface you're working on, including a rectangular one, a bean-shaped one, a sphere, or anything else. Now, last unbelievable part. Because of how conductors separate charge, if there's a hole inside a conductor, there's actually going to be a bunch of charge accumulating on the boundary, specifically the charge density divided by epsilon naught, multiplied by the area surrounding this cavity, 
but inside the cavity and outside the cavity, the electric field is zero. Well, of course, that's unless there is some charge inside the cavity, because obviously then it would hold your electric field. But anything from outside is completely sheltered from the inside by this wall. And any electric field from the inside is totally sheltered from the outside by this wall. So, because of this boundary condition, that means that if you are stuck in a metal car, for example, then any lightning strike that deposits lots of electric charge to the car is actually, well, it's going to make the car pretty unsafe to be in and also very hot, but you're not actually going to get struck directly. You're not going to get electrocuted because you're sitting inside the cavity of a conductor. Since your car is made out of metal, which is a conductor, and you're sitting inside one of the seats, which is a cavity, 